Vietnam is a diverse country with incredible people, food, and landscape. Though Vietnam is known for its beauty, it also faced tragedies over the years, from colonialism and the Vietnam War to mass humanitarian and natural disasters. Today, Vietnam will be facing one of its biggest challenges yet, climate change. Hi, my name is Tiali, and I'll be looking at the effects of climate change on the city of Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh City, commonly known as Saigon, is a city located in the southern east region of Vietnam in Southeast Asia. Historically, it's known for its major role played in the Vietnam War. It has a population around 8 million people. It's known as the largest city in Vietnam and has rapid urbanization as a key characteristic with it. Most industries and harbors in southern Vietnam are located in Ho Chi Minh. The city is known for its tropical climate and has the money currency known as Dong and as well uses the US dollar. They try to still hold on to the idea that they want to be communist, but really have socialist ideals. So I originally went to Ho Chi Minh in 2012. And it was such an enriching experience as I worked in the rural areas and worked in the rice paddies, but I also went to the urban areas like Ho Chi Minh. And I saw such a clear view between where there was pollution and then there was also humidity. And it was such an, a challenging thing for me because I realized climate change is bigger than we actually expect. So what's the aim of this video? Well, we first looked at the issues that was hitting Ho Chi Minh City, and now we need a solution, and that one being the stability wedge. The issues of Ho Chi Minh City are varied. The city expands rapidly and has an urban density that is highly increasing. Increasing pressure on space has drawbacks. Available areas of urban green areas decrease and build up areas can encroach on natural water systems. As natural vegetation and water systems are compromised through urban development, the result is that there is more frequent water raises caused by rainfall and high river flow. Beside these fast economic driven development, two slower and more subtle processes are very important to the city. The first is climate change which leads to rising sea levels, changing river patterns, and increased average temperature. The second is subsidies, which occur in parts of the cities, making these areas more vulnerable to flooding. The rapid development of the cities, combined with the slower processes of climate change and subsidies, will have a large impact on the environment of Ho Chi Minh City. The overwhelming part of the Vietnamese population and most of the economic activities are concentrated in low elevated coastal zones along most of 300,000 kilometers of the coastal line. The two density population main delta regions of the Red River and the Mekong are particularly affected, meaning that flooding is one of the issues that hit Ho Chi Minh City today. Climate change as a result of sea levels rising threaten the general spatial urban development path of Ho Chi Minh City. It could result in totally new dynamics in the process of settlement structures in the short and long run. The current system of planning, guiding, and implementation of urban development is not prepared for the challenges at all. A further challenge related to climate change is the urban heat island effect, which is clearly noticeable in the dense, built inner city districts. Even today, the temperature in these areas are up to 10 degrees above the average temperature of the surrounding districts. This increase of energy demands for cooling is also putting a lot of stress on human health and comfort of the local population, especially the elderly and the young people. The urban heat island can be largely blamed for the problem in the urban planning that has led to insufficient ventilation, lack of green space, increased use of air conditioning, and a strong increased traffic value. Apart from the horror scenarios of climate change, the urban planning authorities in Ho Chi Minh City 
have already been overburdened with problems of a typical mega city in the developing country. The city is suffering from ecological degradation, air and water pollution, insufficient government capacities to cope with the fast growing and migration pressures, sea level rises which lead to flood risks and salt intrusion. An early prediction showed that the average sea level rising in Vietnam would in 2050 be 35 centimeters and 2070 50 centimeters. This is a problem because the sea level rise by one meter over 11% of the urban area and 10% of the population and as well 10% of the gross domestic product will be affected by flooding. As said before, the big reason that climate change is happening, especially over Vietnam, is due to the fact that there's a high carbon dioxide emissions rate within Vietnam. The stabilization wedge is known as a tool for conveying the carbon emissions cut that it can be made to avoid dramatic climate change. If Vietnam allows emissions to double, then it is predicted to lead to a path of significant global warming which in the case of Ho Chi Minh City means more flooding. Instead, Vietnam needs to prevent this doubling of CO2 by trying to keep emissions flat for the next 50 years. One of the most effective ways in doing this is by cutting projected carbon outputs by about 8 billion tons per year to keep a total of 200 billion tons of carbon from entering the atmosphere. To make the stabilization triangle, this is seen as a process of carbon saving. To make it more trackable, it's easier to divide the triangles into eight wedges. Each wedge represents a type of carbon cutting strategy that has the potential to avoid 1 billion tons of carbon emissions per year in the next 50 years. The wedges can represent ways of either making energy with no or reduced carbon emissions or storing carbon dioxide to prevent it from building up as rapidly in the atmosphere. However, keeping emissions flat will require Vietnam to fill in the eight wedges of the stabilization triangle with strategies to reduce emissions. There are a total of 15 strategies, which are available currently, and they are grouped into four major color-coded categories. They consist of efficiencies in conservation. This consists of increased transport efficiencies, reducing miles traveled, increased building efficiencies, and increased efficiencies of electricity production. Fossil fuel based strategies, also known as carbon capture and storage strategies. This consists of fuel switching, fossil based electricity with carbon capture and storage, coal sim fuels, fossil based hydrogen fuels, nuclear energy. This consists of nuclear electricity. And finally, renewable energy and biostorage. This consists of wind-generated energy, solar energy, wind-generated hydrofuel, biofuel, forest storage, soil storage. When looking at the different strategies to cut carbon in Ho Chi Minh City, I was able to apply the wedge game to see what was the best model for Ho Chi Minh City in reducing carbon emissions within Vietnam. I have a total of eight strategies that I think will help Ho Chi Minh City lower its carbon emissions. There are three in renewable energy and biostorage, two in fossil fuel based strategies, one in nuclear energy, and two in efficiencies and conservation. For efficiency and conservation, the two strategies that could be worked on are increasing transport efficiency and increasing efficiency of electricity production. Within Ho Chi Minh City, every four to five people have a motor vehicle, mainly motorcycles, that is typically 25 miles per gallon and is driven on an average of 8,000 miles per year, emitting a ton of carbon dioxide within the air annually. A wedge of emission savings would be achieved if fuel efficiency of all vehicles in Ho Chi Minh City were doubled by 25 miles per gallon to 50 miles per gallon. Today, Ho Chi Minh City relies heavily on coal mines for its energy and produces about one third of its carbon emissions from that. Producing Vietnam's current coal-based electricity with double efficiency will save a wedge worth of carbon emissions. 
Due to large contributions from hydropower and nuclear energy, the electricity sector already gets about 35% of its energy from non-carbon sources. For fossil fuel-based strategies, also known as carbon capture and storage, or CCS, there are two strategies that are beneficial for Vietnam to look in. The first being coal sign fuel, and the second being fuel switching. Since Vietnam has a massive coal mine, it would be very beneficial to have sign fuel as an option instead of conventional oil. When coal is heated and combined with steam and air or oxygen, carbon monoxide and hydrogen are released and can produce and make a liquid fuel called sign fuel. This liquid fuel can be used to power up cars and vehicles as well as doing building construction as it is more beneficial than doing and using petroleum. The coal-based sign fuel is better than petroleum as it can be captured and stored rather than vented into the atmosphere. This is important as less atmospheric pollution is created, which leads to climate change. Though coal plants can be very efficient, it is not the only way to get electricity. Another way, because of the low carbon content, is natural gas. Because of the low carbon content of natural gas and the high efficiencies of natural gas plants, producing electricity with natural gas results in only half the emissions of coal. The strategy of nuclear energy for Ho Chi Minh City is a very debatable topic. Nuclear fission provides a large amount of electricity to the world and produces no CO2. However, it is not viable for long-term use as its effect of radiation has a negative effect on all biotic and abiotic organisms, such as the environment. For the renewable energy and biostorage wedge, there were three strategies that I felt best worked for Vietnam. First was solar electricity. Second was wind-generated hydrogen fuel. And third, forest storage. For solar electricity, Vietnam is mostly sunny year-round. Photovoltaic or PV cells convert sunlight to electricity and provide a source of carbon-free and renewable energy. Installing a wedge worth of photovoltaic cells would still require a raise with an area of 2 million hectares. PV cells currently aren't really used often in Ho Chi Minh City and to achieve a wedge of emissions reduction will require an increased development of PV cells. A current drawback for PV cell electricity is its price, which is declining but still two to five times higher than fuel-based electricity. For wind hydrogen, humidity is especially important for Vietnam. To produce hydrogen with wind energy, electricity generated by wind turbines is used in a process that liberates hydrogen from water. For Vietnam, around 100,000 windmills will be needed for one wedge of emission reduction. Wind hydrogen can be produced at small scales where it is needed. Wind hydrogen thus will require less investment in infrastructure for fuel distribution to homes and vehicles. For forest storage, this includes land plants and soils containing large amounts of carbon. Today in Vietnam, there is a net removal of carbon from the atmosphere by these natural sinks. Ho Chi Minh City's land plant biomass can be increased by both reducing deforestation and planting new forests. Halting Vietnam's deforestation in 50 years could provide one wedge of emission savings. And this is important as it reduces carbon dioxide from going into the atmosphere and contributing to climate change. So as we can see, climate change within Vietnam is a very serious issue and something that needs to be talked about. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Tiali. Farewell.